Hello everybody, Adrian Plus here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And it is 160, can I say it this time, because it's yeah, a big number. It. It's number 160 in Sounding the Shallows. And what is the significance of the number 160? I don't know. Nor do I. Oh, but I'm sorry. quite sure that our regular <laughs> correspondent will fill it in for us. I'm sure, I'm sure it, there is a significant... It's a significant day. Come on, Adrian. What is significant about yesterday and today? You you are seeing through a glass darkly, aren't you? Why? Because I have had my cataract removed there and uh, I'm now a bit blurred in my left eye, but it is... I can I can see through my new lens, and it is healing, and I'm very pleased to have got it. And we're both going to get. get you them were done. a little disturbed, weren't you? Because they have to go. You know, they they go through all the stuff beforehand. <laughs> what was it that? The well, I I don't said? want to put anyone off, Bridget. I don't think I'm going to <laughs> well, say. I'm what. having mine done very soon, uh, so. Well, I, all I, I know, I don't want to say. I, what I want to say is that it it's it took a very short time, and it was very successful. Okay. And uh, and I'm I am happily going back to have the other one done okay. at some point soon. So uh, <laughs> let's let's leave the details out at the moment. Get it done and see better, oh, okay. right? So well, what of course is significant this week is when we did our recording last week, we actually didn't know what was happening about the submersible. Did we? Everybody was still looking for it, and of course the nightmare answer was that it 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 imploded after about an hour and a half of of uh, starting to go down mm. so we didn't know no we didn't know didn't know the end of the story then no but i mean the interesting thing is and what is striking me adrian at the moment because in the uk i don't know about the rest of the world but there's a big um, a big exploration into the whole COVID thing, what happened, what went wrong, what should have happened, what mistakes were made. When you think about the submersible already, it was, was it fit for purpose? Who was responsible? I mean, even this thing about the uh, the apparent uh, attempt attempted coup in Russia trying to look for the for, for some knowledge beforehand that somebody might have known as though always one's got to home down into and maybe maybe rightly wrongly I don't know what do you think into finding finding the the person responsible well I think like all the phenomena of this kind it's very difficult to disentangle it because if the if the motivation is to truly find ways to avoid trouble in the future yeah. or or to see where things might have been done differently that's fine but if it's just an appetite for making sure that i'm not to blame but somebody else is uh, then i think it's it's quite worrying there is a bit of a um a a, a feeding fever isn't there over this stuff yeah uh, we've it, said it, does, it before haven't we but, oh, I mean, the, the, yeah. it is a fine line, isn't it? Because it is also right to investigate thoroughly and discover mistakes that have been made, as you said, proper. Mm. You know, especially, uh, I heard a couple of reports about just about the submersible, talking about how it wasn't dissimilar to the Titanic in the sense that the warnings were not heeded, mm. you know, and that what we were seeing was the tip of the iceberg, you know, that, that it hadn't been understood. And I suppose that's what always happens when you start delving into the reasons for things. You you, th you find there are warnings that have been ignored, yeah. whatever whatever it is. But you really. very rarely hear anyone say, oh, by the way, I, I had a very strong warning about, made, offered a very strong warning and, and it didn't happen. I mean, so it still isn't that, I mean, I, I was remembering um, uh, people kind of laugh about this now, but there are aspects of it that certainly weren't funny. I mean, we both remember the night when we woke really quite briefly on, it was between the 15th and the 16th of October. So it was the night of the 15th, the early hours of the 16th in 1987. 1987. And we lived in Hailsham, which is in the south of England. And we muttered something about the wind getting up a bit. Well, actually, and I was supposed to be taking you somewhere the next day. And I remember saying, if the wind stays up like this, there's no right. way we I'm taking there, yeah. you. Yeah. And um, actually, as everybody knows now, there were winds up to 100 miles an hour right across the south of England. 
massive devastation and I think it was 18 people killed and incredibly I mean that's awful but 18 million trees 15, blown yeah. down 15 million trees well, it blown was like down. a swathe wasn't it going across the south that's of right. England uh, of huge trees trees that you'd never think could be blown down mm. oaks and ashes and we saw them some of them in yeah. the morning didn't we yeah. and the, the the warning famously again a man called Michael Fish, oh, for those who Michael don't Fish. live in England and wouldn't know this, was really, uh, people quite fond of him really, Michael Fish, the weather forecaster, had dismissed rumours and amateur predictions of a hurricane on the previous day. Yeah. In fact, um, what it turned out to be was something they call an extratropical cyclone. And it was a, a massive thing. Now, yes, but uh, I mean, you can't hold him responsible for the cyclone. Only maybe that if the warning had been stronger, mm. then people might have battened down yeah, the hatches. Yeah, if, if the a warning had 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 a more res responsible and reliable context, probably people would have done. Yeah, but yeah. But, but I mean, I suppose are. if you're looking at the uh, all the stuff that's to do with looking back over COVID, you might say that. Um, it's not that dissimilar in the sense that we're not used to having hurricanes in Great Britain. You know, no, we not. don't have the extremes of weather, just as we haven't had the extremes of pandemics until now. Yeah. So, so maybe we have to be a little more forgiving. I think people have forgiven Michael Fish, but it would be nice if there was a bit of forgiving going on. Hmm. There was a song about Michael Fish, you know. I don't sung by three women I oh, think oh come on Michael Michael no no it was a very it was a, <laughs> it was lifting him up as a sort of male icon he wasn't exactly the idea of people's oh. male icon but no anyway I was I was thinking about um, warnings and if you remember there were attempts when we um, became engaged or even before that with people saying warning us that our marriage would be doomed to failure. Yeah, people did seem to feel quite comfortable to come yes, forward with their opinions about this. I think it was because we were both pretty up and down. I know everyone thinks of me as the sort of steady one and you as the Do creative. They? Oh, I think so. I think they... What? <laughs> You're <laughs> joking, <not>. aren't you? <laughs> well, they might have been know. right, but the doom is going to have to get his skates on after 53 <laughs> years. Although... Um, uh, someone at our the weekend we just did down in Oswestry with some lovely people uh, had been married. I think I'm not sure if it was 61 or yeah. 62 years. Man yeah. called Derek, uh, so he's doing he's doing even better than us. Yeah, but on absolutely. the whole, I think, and on a more serious level, it's probably a bit of a mugs game, uh, offering advice about marriage and relationships. Mm. I mean, our record, and we won't get into it in detail, is not great because, I mean, if you. If you warn a couple that they're, or you, yeah, you that you think it isn't going to work out, you ever, you either, you become the people who say "I told you so," yeah. or the people who never believed in these wonderful people and the wonderful okay, marriage. Okay, so does so. that mean that that people shouldn't have said it to us, or we shouldn't have said it to other people? I don't know about that. I, abso I mean, I've absolutely there, no idea. No, no I, mean, I don't know. Um, I don't know whether you should say. I, I don't know. I, mean, I was you, thinking about one of the most famous stories in the Bible, the story of Naaman, when his servants, they must have had a very interesting relationship with their master to to feel, or else they. Well, you just, need to tell a bit of the story. For oh those well, who don't well, know. I think everybody will know it. It's the story of Naaman who um, had some form of skin disease, where we sort of under a general heading of some sort of leprosy I suppose but it probably wasn't it was another sort of skin disease but anyway he was a mess mm -hmm. and uh, if you remember it was a little servant girl who'd actually been trafficked Israeli into an Israeli yeah. girl and she said I know a guy I wish you hadn't told me to I hope I get this right well, I know so a guy who is a prophet called Elisha yeah. and he will be able to back help in you Israel, yeah. back in Israel yeah. so Naaman who really wants to get it's his wife who then says why yeah. don't you give it a go so Naaman goes to Elisha and uh, offers him great amount of gifts and all the rest of it and Elisha says you need to go and bathe Elisha didn't the, even come out of the house no he? he didn't even he bother to come out, out I know yeah. and that was really insulting says to Naaman you need to bathe in the river Jordan three times seven and times 
See, I wish I wasn't telling this <laughs> seven <laughs> times. And, uh, and Naaman anyway says, why would I even consider the River Jordan when we have such beautiful rivers yeah. back home? But actually, it was a bit piddled off because... He was he peeled wasn't off treated generally. as an important person. He was wasn't he? an important person and yeah. he was being asked to do something that he thought was ridiculous. So he set off home with he all sets his off home. horses and whatever they had. He does. And gold and gifts yeah. and all the rest of it. Yeah. So you can imagine him just stomping off, really. Yeah. There's no yes. way he was going to do something so utterly ridiculous and Not going and to be diminished by this and not going to be prophet diminished. who couldn't even be bothered and to come out and talk to him. extraordinary servants. I mean, whether it was that they had a very special relationship with him or whether it was just that they felt so strongly maybe they saw something in Naaman's eyes that day that made them feel they had to say something and what they said was if it had been something grand and dramatic and or even brave you've mm. been asked to do you'd have been up for it because you're that sort of person yeah. uh, why don't you do it yeah. And for some reason, name and listen to the most. We know the story, as you say, it was seven times. Yeah. When he came up after the seventh time, he was completely His skin clear. was like the skin of a young boy. Yeah. yeah. So, so there was such courage. And so sometimes, but I mean, they may, well, goodness knows what might have happened to them. I mean, they were servants and he was a high commander. I mean, mm. they could have been put to the death. They could have been dismissed from all security of their job. Well, they we can't know, but it sounds as though they trust, they cared about him. Yes. And it sounds as though he trusted his s servants. I think that's so the key, Adrian, that they cared know. about him. They yeah. cared about what happened. They could have yeah. gone back. They could have gone back. They'd have been fine. They'd mm. have all gone back, all agreed that Elisha was rubbish. Mm. He hadn't even bothered to come out. They could have yeah. done that, but they didn't. Mm. So maybe maybe that that level of courage is what's needed sometimes, sometimes. even if you might be yeah, as yeah. you say you know sort of dismissed from it because people don't want to hear what you have to say mm. yeah I don't, I, I don't I think as I've got older I've less and less ventured into pronouncing what I think someone should do but I think I probably did more so when yes I, when I was but, but I mean maybe yeah, I mean, what the, I mean, when you think about the way Jesus dealt with these things, I mean, he did issue warnings. Well, didn't he, did, he he didn't pull back at all. In fact, um, I don't know with, I don't know about individuals. Well, I do know a bit, but, but for instance, he said, and we, uh, we we've always uh, often talked about the pulpy words in the in the Christian church. Now you love, have now you have to explain love, peace, things. joy. And the, they're too easy to use and too yeah. obviously part of it all and so they can be used without thought yeah. but unity is another of them so we say you know Jesus came to bring people together and someone people will nod and they'll think oh yes 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 well he himself said don't think I came to create unity I didn't because uh, families he mentioned families I think families will be split, split apart by the the teaching or the the things that I'm saying. Um, uh, so I suppose he's saying I didn't come to bring a sort of nice, as you say, a sort of pulpy word that anybody could think, oh yeah, that's nice, no, lovey dovey no. stuff. No, that's true. He was, he was saying, uh, I mean, if you think about the thing about if you want to follow me, count the cost. Yeah. He was saying there is a very definite and right thing to be done here uh, and some people are going to hate that, which they do. Uh, and people could could be. Sp and what else did he mean? I mean, in in and out outside the church. I mean, there's certainly plenty in it of division and all the church and outsiders. There's plenty of that as well. Um, but the problem still is with with that is is who actually accurately represents the the truth. Who who are the people who can say, here's the thing you should follow or that is right, mm. and those others are wrong? Um, mm. I was thinking, do you remember that church in the east, in the, where we used to live, where they were collecting for charity very admirably, yeah. and there was a local, I think it was a, a pub which was frequented by gay people, who collected money for them and took it to them, and they refused to take it because they didn't like the lifestyle of the people who brought it um, yeah. and I 
I think that's a fake division. Right. I, 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 I think those people genuinely and warmly wanted to be part of an, an absolutely fantastic mm. attempt to help people. Mm. And the, the, the people, in, I don't want to speak for them, but uh, uh, for them it was about something else mm. that they had a very strong view on. So. Yeah, it's very difficult this. I mean, when I think about, it's tricky, isn't it? I mean, Jesus on the cross said, uh, Father forgive them because they don't know what they're doing mm. so there was no blame game there it's only later that everybody thought well it, it's all to do with Judas which of course created great problems later on because uh, from from then on really Judas mm. and the Jews were going to become uh, victimized really because of what apparently they'd done people conveniently forgetting that Jesus was a Jew as well mm. but they needed a person or was it Pilate's fault it's got to be somebody's mm, fault absolutely. and Jesus didn't want that mm. because he knew that nobody and, and that would be us as well could really understand the full full thing of what they were doing so on that level and then other times he's really strong with mm. blame isn't he I mean what was it he said about little ones he's he was talking about people who follow him that those were the I think were the children he was talking about little ones those who who are going with him in the way they should go and he's according to the Matthew I think it is the gospel of Matthew says um, those who cause little ones to fall he actually says it's better that they had a millstone hung around their neck and drowned in the depths of the sea. Right. Which, now, you couldn't be much stronger than that, could you? Not really. Um, Not I mean, really. I know we, we can talk about hyperbole and yeah, making it, saying something perfect and all that. Yeah, it's pretty strong but, stuff. Uh, it's, it's strong stuff, but it, it's easy to simply say that sounds crude and large and horrible, but behind that is the fact that the only people he really judged were people um, who misused power were hypocrites were yeah. people who yeah. didn't come to didn't do the right thing themselves but wouldn't let anybody else do it yeah and so so i mean I, i'm not really talking about the submersible because i really don't know what's going to be the outcome of all this but I, if you look back there was a big thing in the uk there was a horrendous fire at the grenfell tower wasn't there oh, yes, and yeah. and it turned out that it was the cladding that had been mm. put on the building that was mm. cheapskate and the wrong sort mm. and would go up in a fire and would mm. therefore there were people who were responsible and maybe was there warnings about that beforehand that were ignored? I think there were, yeah. Yes, exactly. So there are times where there are their blame is placeable. Is that right? I mean, what would Jesus say? All these people that were burned in those towers, mm. um, that if somebody has deliberately, and this is not the same as the people who put him on the cross, mm -hmm. if somebody has deliberately used shaddy shoddy rather shaddy shoddy materials uh done it too quickly to save money or to, to make save money, money or yeah. to make money yeah and we you know and and even during covid there is no doubt that some people made big bucks from it mm. um some people didn't produce the ppe they should have done mm. that the, there have always been people who've seen a quick buck and uh so maybe maybe there has to be blame, but it, it needs to be placed carefully, doesn't it? I, I was also thinking, that's absolutely right, and I was also thinking about the fact that we speak to a lot, of, have spoken to lots of people over the last few years about their lives, or listened rather, I hope. And one of the things that we've realized um, is that most people have some idea of where they are with what they're thinking and feeling and what they want to do. And when it comes to blame, um, it, it's very easy to take a moral stance and inflict it on people who are already dealing with that. Well, I was going to say most people that, failure, yeah. that we meet, 
blame themselves. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> um, sometimes they can look and they can blame their family upbringing or things that happened, and they can place mm -hmm. it. And 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 if they are able to pinpoint it, sometimes that's a good place to start the healing. But yeah. um, if if they're consumed and feeding anger and mm. and uh, revenge and all these other things, then it's just going to be a disaster for mm. them, really. There is no health in blame. There is in in itself. Is there? There's health in. There is health in forgiveness. There's health in making things better. Yes, There's health in telling the truth. Yes, and really good counselling will help yeah. people to start from either their devastation or their anger and help them to calmly look at the facts, mm. which is what they're trying to do with this COVID requiry and maybe need to do with the submersible and, and, and all the rest of it. Look at the mm. facts, find out what really happened. And really good counselling will do that, won't it? It'll yeah, help yeah. to... Um, help to really get to the point where mm. you understand what went wrong and why you're feeling how you're feeling what went wrong with mm. something that's supposed to sink to the bottom of the sea what went wrong with covid what went wrong uh, with yeah. lots of things with lots of well, things. we have to go but there's one thing i just wanted to say to people uh, which i thought was terrific this week the there was a program about and i'm sorry i can't remember her name the girl who died at a very early age from brain tumors and people are now wearing t-shirts with a message on oh, them oh yes which and characterized we will her, name. her i try but yeah. her way of her attitude to life and there are four things yeah. if i can remember them rightly uh they are um be brave yes um be kind be kind it was the other way around be kind be brave be silly. Be silly. Be honest. Be honest. And those are wonderful categories. And if you can, if you can just tuck those way inside your self. Put them on your metaphorical yes, t-shirt. Yes, they are. They are very, very helpful. The silliness, no less than the others, because there are times when you need to remove yourself from. Yeah. Tragedy and and and, and silliness and helps you laugh at yourself. Yes, it, does, it helps yeah, you take yeah. take what's happened to you. Yeah. Some of some of the people we know laugh through some of the biggest tragedies they in do, their lives. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. mean they simplify them or they belittle them, but mm. they they allow their natural yeah. selves and be brave to enough to be, be honest. Yeah, to say it the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, I Even thought that was wonderful. Not very and I'm very sorry that uh, her name has escaped me at the moment. We'll remember it by next we week. We will, yeah. So, there we are. And if you've got fed up with us talking to you, I don't blame you in the <laughs> slightest. <laughs> we'll but we'll speak see to you next week. week. Bye bye.